Welcome to another short story for grown-ups or bedtime story for adults. This is the Brothers Grimm fairy tale, The Devil's Sooty Brother, um, retold by Muriel McMahon, who is a Jungian psychoanalyst, uh, read by myself. So just settle in and uh, look away from the screen um, and enjoy. The Devil's Sooty Brother Once upon a time, in a certain kingdom, there was a soldier. And the war was over. And this soldier was bereft. He knew what to do as a warrior. He knew what to do to serve his country. But he didn't know what to do when he was discharged and the war was over. He wasn't celebrating that the war was over. He did not know how to care for himself. He did not know where he was going to eat. He did not know how he was possibly going to deal with the things he had seen and the things he had done, and he was bereft. So he walked his way home, and he went to the house of his father, and he asked his father for shelter, but the door was closed against him. His father said, There is not enough. I am an old man. I don't have anything left for you. Go make your way in the world. I don't want a 30 year old living in my basement. And the door was shut against him. So he went to his brothers and he asked them, could you employ me? Could I work on your farm? Could I work in your mill? Could I work in your mine? And his brothers said, no, we have nothing for you. Go make your way. And this soldier was bereft, and he began to despair. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something comes. All of a sudden, he saw a little man. Some say this little man had a green coat. Some say, if you look closely, this little man had hooves hidden in his boots. And some say he may even have had horns. And this little man said to our soldier, I will offer you shelter. I will offer you food. I will offer you employment. And at this point, the soldier felt that he had found his lucky day. Until he discovered that this shelter and this food and this clothing would be in hell because in fact this man was the devil but at this point he had no other option so he went just like Saint Christopher he went and served the devil so down he went into Hades down he went into hell and he was told by the devil I will feed you and I will clothe you and I will give you employment, but for seven years you must not groom yourself. That means no clipping your nails, no shaving your beard, no combing your hair, no bathing. For seven years you must just let yourself go ungroomed. Well, it's not like he had any other option. So our soldier agreed, and he was put to work, and his work was to tend to the fires. And the devil had three large cauldrons, and the devil said to him, Do not groom, and do not open the lids on these pots. And so this is what our man did. He stoked the fire day after day, and the devil would come and go but he never lifted the lids off those pots. One year passed and two and three 
And maybe around the fourth year, oh, he began to get curious. I wonder what's in those pots. I don't see the devil open them. And I've been instructed not to open them, but I'm curious. I wonder what's there. And in the fifth year and the sixth year, he could bear it no longer. And on the cusp of the seventh year, he opened up the first pot. And to amazement, there in the pot was his corporal. And he said to his corporal, Oh my God, you used to have me under your foot. Now I've got you under my foot, you old dog. And he put the lid back on and he stoked the fire. He made sure it was hot and boiling. And I wonder what's in the second pot. So he opened up the lid and sure enough, it was his sergeant. Oh, you old dog, the authority you had over me, the way you had me do your bidding, ha ha. Now you're in the cooking pot and I will get the fire going. And that's what our man did. One pot left. On the eve of the seventh year, he opens the lid and sure enough, it's his general. And he says to the general, Oh, you sat in your ivory tower. Oh, you told the men where to go and some of them didn't come back. You, you're the one who was so evil and you deserve to be in the hell fires forever. And he put the lid back on and he made sure the fire under this one was hot and blue and white. And then the devil came back and the devil said, you have served me well for seven years, you did not groom. And by now our soldier's hair was matted and tangled and oh, what a smell. And his teeth were almost mossy yellow and his fingernails and toenails were curling in on themselves. And the devil said, but you didn't keep your full promise. You opened the lids on the pots. The soldier, the man, was bereft because he thought that this meant that he would not be released. He thought this meant that he would stay in hell. But that's not what happened, the devil said. So he put that sawdust behind the door all the sawdust that has come from the wood that you have placed in the fire, sweep it up and put it in a knapsack. So that's what our man did. And the devil said to him, now you are released, you may go. And so our soldier left, looking like hell itself, yet with a backpack filled with sawdust. But when he came back to the outer world that he had left, the bag on his back was no longer light as if it carried sawdust. So he stopped and he opened the bag to discover it was filled with gold. Oh my, there has been gold that has come from that servitude. So he went to an inn and the innkeeper didn't want to let him in but then our soldier showed the innkeeper that he had a sack full of gold. And so the innkeeper said, well, I've got a room at the back. I think we can find you some lodging. So he made him a room at the back and the innkeeper rubbed his hands because he knew what his plans were. And sure enough, as our man slept, the innkeeper stole the sack of gold. And when our man woke up, he was right where he began, except he looked like hell and he had no money. And he felt so ashamed of himself. Outwardly, he looked like he felt inwardly, that he had lost all that gold that he had earned at doing that deep, deep work. And so, with nothing else to do, he went back to hell. And he expected that the devil would chastise him, 
and point out all his failings. But to his surprise, the devil said, You lost the gold through no fault of your own. Please sit upon this chair and allow me to make you fresh again. And to our man's surprise, the devil clipped his hair and shaved his beard and wiped his face and his hands and clipped his fingernails and his toenails and gave him new clothes to wear and another knapsack. And when our man went back to what he had left again, he knew he had a bag of gold and he now was proud of what he had achieved. He was touched by the devil touching his ugliness. And he was able to understand that what was boiling in each of those cauldrons was him putting authority into the hands of somebody else rather than doing service to the man to the demands of the outer world, but somehow staying connected to his own authority. And the story goes that he traveled far and wide, distributing that gold. And one day he found the love of his, the love of his life and the two of them had a comfortable abode that welcomed strangers. And that is the story of the devil's sooty brother. This story may be true. This story may be false. This story tells a lie to reveal a truth.